gonna shove it. Yeah! He's gonna shove it. Shove it! All right, Brick to the Head boys. It's been a while since we've done an episode of Ring of the Hawk on here, and we're on season two now, if you don't remember. James Storm recently competed on a Patreon exclusive, and he got a C overall. I was a bit torn, maybe it should have been a B, but it's too late to change it now anyway. Today's competitor on Ring of the Hawk was a YouTube recommendation. See, I do listen to you guys sometimes. It was a recommendation by Alan Smith. And so that proves once and for all, If you know a wrestler who could do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! And whilst you're at it, smack subscribers to join us on the Flying to Graceland World Tour as we fly together to 100k subscribers. And if you say that you won't, I'll rip out your teeth with pliers. Okay, okay, Anarchia, a cheap Chavo Guerrero or a bargain store LEX? Make your decision or I'll break your necks. Anarchia debuts on pay-per-view helping Super Mex Hernandez as a fan in the crowd. There's not much more to say, there's no need to spray. Match 1, Tag Team Street Fight Match, Mexican America with Sarita and Rosita, and before the match, Hernandez takes time to introduce us to Anarquia. He speaks in Spanish, but still manages to sound like a dollar store Chavo Guerrero. They drop a giant Mexican flag over the USA flag, probably blocking the crowd at the back from being able to see. His voice is so great that my ears are hurting. Devon and Matt Morgan will be their opponents. Devon knocks down Anarchia and then hits him with a side slam as our guy falls screaming to the outside. Devon is really dominating until the Mexican ladies who aren't actually Mexican distract Devon. Velvet Sky runs out to try and take them out but it doesn't work for her. Zombie Angelina Love then comes out gorming out. The match that's going on is completely forgotten as Angelina Love slowly walks towards the ring. Winter also comes out and she pulls back her little drug addict friend. Winter's been feeding her perks. I made a whole video about it, you should check it out. Finally back to the match, Devon hits a flying tackle but he's still distracted. While Devon's staring around the ring, <laughs> Anarchia hits him in the head with brass knuckles and pins him. I'm not sure why the referee needed to be distracted, it was a street fight. So he landed one punch in this match, not looking good is it? I will say at least he seems confident and is a good fit with the faction. Probably because he's the only one of the group that was even born in Mexico. Match 2, Hernandez and Anarchia with Sarita and Rosita versus the team of Devon Dudley and Tommy Dreamer. Not exactly an exciting match then. Anarchia reverses an Irish whip but he gets taken down with a shoulder tackle and then splashed. Devon and Tommy Dreamer team up as he screams. Dreamer then hits a scoop slam. How do you make a scoop slam look bad? Devon then hits the what's up to his nutsack. On the outside of the ring, Anarchia is fighting Dreamer and he sends him into the pole. In the ring, Devon is kissing Rosita. Unfortunately, his lust for the ladies has distracted him again and Anarchia hits him in the back with a steel chair to end the match. After the match, Hernandez wants to throw Tommy Dreamer out of the ring, but Matt Boring stops him. Because he's boring and couldn't let something awesome like that happen. Then Morgan chokeslams Anarchia. Two matches in and we've got one punch and one steel chair shot. It's an oh, S, I'm sorry, I was trying to be fair in the first match, but you can't even land a punch on Tommy Dreamer. Look at the size of Tommy Dreamer! Match 3, Anarchia with Mexican America. Their theme music is just a loop of the LAX theme song with some annoying mumbling over the track. Anarchia has a mic again, I would normally grab the earplugs at this point, but I'm being paid to grade him here. He basically wants the Americans to salute the Mexican flag. He takes on Chris Sabin who has a hoodie with spikes on it. Sabin is distracted and he gets jumped and stamped on. He gives Saban a snap mirror and then a face wash with his boot. Saban realises suddenly that he's facing Anarchia and not Hulk Hogan and he wakes up and starts battering him around the ring. Then Saban goes for a springboard double axe but Anarchia is too far away. The axe handle hits but unfortunately for Saban he blows his knee out. Just seconds later Anarchia wins with the small package. Another short bad match. Alex Shelley returns to save Saban but nothing's going to save his knee. Shelley had also been out for a long time at this point, so it was just typical of the guns that one would get injured on the day that the other returns. There really Shut was nothing to save this match. Match 4, Battle Royal for the number one contendership for the world title. Of course our guy doesn't get an entrance, why would he? Matt Boring is in a bad mood and he's eliminating people left, right and centre. He chokes Anarchia and pushes him out of the ring after about 30 seconds. The commentary team don't even mention that it happened. Anderson eventually wins by pulling Bully Ray out of the ring by his big meatball head. It's another S. Oh, the man. first entry to Season 2 shove its owners looking more and more likely. 
Match 5, TNA Sacrifice 2011. Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita versus the men with Mohawks. Jeff Hardy, Stoner Friend and Jesse Neal. This match is being billed as USA vs Mexico. Anarchia starts out with Jeff's friend. He gets out wrestled as Shannon keeps working on his arm. Cheating is the only way to turn this one around for him and he does manage to knock Shannon down. Shannon then wakes up and hits a couple of arm drags and puts on an arm bar. Anarchia screams damn it in his voice that sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Anarchia yanks Shannon down to the ground to break up the submission and he slowly tries to pin Shannon's arms down to the ground for the pin. What you're seeing here is actually Anarchia's finisher, the pin. Shannon eventually gets bored of toying with him and he bridges up and ends up on the top rope to hit a big arm drag. The girls on the outside cause a distraction to bring Hernandez in. Eventually Jesse gets the better of Hernandez but while he's screaming at the camera, Anarchia takes him out. Our guy's back in legally now but Shannon also brings himself in. He hits a top rope crossbody for a two. Shannon's enjoying messing around with Anarchia and he runs to the outside and then he wraps Anarchia up in the ring apron. Shannon is on top here and he's more than Jeff Hardy's stoner friend at this point. Shannon comes back into the ring crashing down on Anarchia. Unfortunately the ladies get involved again with the ref distracted. Our guy then tags out as Shannon keeps dominating him and I don't blame him. Hernandez comes in and softens him up and then tags out again. Later in the match Anarchia stacks Shannon up on the top rope but he fights it off and he hits a moonsault crossbody block. He can't beat Shannon so he tags out again, he's useless. Jesse Neal is now in so Anarchia may have a chance. Jesse drop kicks him in the corner and then dodges a Hernandez attack as he smashes into his partner. Then he gets sent out the ring by Shannon. The referee has completely lost control of this one and Hernandez puts Jesse Neal away of a nice power move. This match was actually good, I'm in shock. I know it was mostly down to Shannon's hard work but if your dance partner sucks you wouldn't be able to do your best moves. There were no botches and it was an exciting battle. That aside, I don't think Anarchia hit a single move on his own. I'm giving this a C overall as I don't think we're going to do better in this video. Props to Jeff Hardy's stoner friend though. Match 6, Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita versus James Storm and Alex Shelley with Bobby Roode, aka the Beer Guns. Anarchia starts out the match with knees on Shelley in the corner. Shelley isn't having it, he takes him down and stamps on him. The Cowboy gets the tag and he hits a knee drop and a leg drop for a two count. Storm and Shelly are working well together as Storm pokes Anarchia in his stupid eyes. They look to put Anarchia away but the Mexican America cheat and then Hernandez is able to come in but it doesn't go well for him either as he misses a top rope splash. The Cowboy and Anarchia both get the tags and Storm gives him a bat body drop. Storm then follows it up with a DDT. James Storm then has to match one with a backstabber but the girls call a distraction on the outside. Storm spits beer in their face and on their tits to get rid of them. Shelly is now in the ring and he tries a super kick but he hits his own partner. Anarchia covers James Storm for the free. Six matches in and he hasn't really hit a move. He certainly doesn't have a finisher. Maybe his Stop finisher Shelly. is making the pin cover, I was joking earlier, but maybe that's it. That's certainly a finisher if you think about it. His best move is something that even the most basic wrestler can do three times a match, at least. After the match, Anarchia gets to cut a promo on the Hawk. He wants a tag title match and he calls Hogan a racist, which really offends the Hawkster. Well, the Hawks seem to pay attention to that, despite being called a racist. Why don't we have a tag team title shot? Mm -hmm. Is it because, oh, I don't know, we're Mexican? You better be careful what you're saying and who you're talking to. Because the word racist is getting ready to come out of your mouth. It's going to be a real big issue with me and Mr. Bischoff. Because I just might turn into the real life Terminator and play a game a holster says with your two beautiful Latin ladies. That's right, it's uh, when you least expect it, it's uh, yeah. mal mal que te quiz. it's uh, Hogan. Match 7, number one contendership for the tag titles. Hernandez and Anarchia without La Prostitutos versus Magnus and Williams the British Invasion. I'm a massive Doug Williams fan by the way, he was my first exposure to hitting someone with a brick in wrestling. He made me the hawk I am today. It's clear to me at this point that Anarchia's catchphrase is stupid Americanos in a voice that makes me want to rip out my eyeballs. I actually think it's supposed to be Nothing's Impossible because it's tattooed on Hernandez. Will it be possible to keep him out the shove it zone? Let's find out. The British Invasion storm the ring and they double team Anarchia working on his arms. Doug Williams scores a knockdown but Hernandez interferes. Anarchia is useless though and Hernandez has to make the blind tag to save him. Now Hernandez suplexes Williams across the ropes and Anarchia boots him in the head. Anarchia seems to have isolated Williams. He does another suplex across the ropes like Hernandez did earlier and then Hernandez leapfrogs over him to crash onto Williams. Shades of the world's greatest tag team there. 
Eventually, Williams hits a European uppercut from the top. It was actually on Hernandez. It was not Anarchia's fault, all right? Magnus charges into the ring, hitting a big boot on our guy. It's almost over as Magnus gives Anarchia a Michinoku driver for a two. It's even closer to being over as Magnus hits the top rope elbow, but Hernandez breaks up the pin. I thought Joe and Magnus came up with that combo. Obviously, I was wrong. Anarchia is on Dream Street as Magnus lifts him up and Williams hits a European uppercut. It should be over, but La Prostitutos appear and distract the referee. Hernandez uses that time to drop the elbow on Magnus. Somehow, this leads to a free. It sure didn't take much to beat Magnus back in 2011. Times have changed. Nowadays, he can kick out two last call super kicks in a row. Match 8, Hardcore Justice 2011, tag title match. Mexican-America with Rosita and Sarita versus Beer Money, the champions. La Prostitutos get sent to the back to even up the odds. Anarchia doesn't start, but he does distract Rudy Rude so his team can get the starting advantage. Anarchia comes into the match but looks like an idiot straight away. The Beer Boys double team him and Rude hits a knee for the two count. Beer Money are all over them as Storm jabs Anarchia in his eyes and follows up with a running neck breaker. On the outside, Rude trips up Anarchia and Storm charges out the ring to kick him in the face. This looks like it's only going one way as Rude throws his partner out of the ring. On the outside, Storm smashes him into the stars and stripes and he acts like it burns him. Taz on commentary is saying that Anarchia's wrestling style is hardcore. I'm not really sure he has a style. Mexican America actually managed to do something then as they hit double shoulder blocks. Anarchia acts like this was really impressive. Something truly remarkable happens next. Anarchia hits his first move, a double underhook suplex on Rudy Rude. Only took eight matches. I didn't realize he was capable of anything other than punches and kicks. Storm eventually gets the hot tag against Anarchia, but it's not exactly exciting. Storm hits him with the eight second ride, which didn't happen much at this time in his career. Hernandez has to break up the pin. Storm then hits the top rope Huracarana on Anarchia, followed by a Bobby Roode splash, but somehow Anarchia gets the shoulder up. Hernandez almost assists his partner in getting the free, and then he stupidly goes to the top rope. It doesn't end well for him as Rude pushes him from the top into a last call super kick from Storm to end the match. It wasn't terrible again. There's enough good guys around to make sure the match doesn't suck. At least he hit his first proper move as well, so that gives me hope. It's another C. Match 9 starts with a special guest commentator, a wild slap nuts and his wife of his. Jeff Jarrett. Jeff is the AAA champion, so I guess that's why he's here. In reality, he was sent to Mexico to keep him away from Kurt Angle for a while due to the Karen situation. It's another tag title match. Mexican America with Sarita and Rosita versus the champions beer money. Anarchia starts out getting battered by Rude before Storm comes in and he gets beaten up even more. The Storm knee drop gets a two. Storm hits a rock bottom on Anarchia for another two. Hernandez has to get involved from the outside to turn the match around for Mexican America, and they're now working together as they hit their leapfrog double team. A bit later on, Storm kicks Anarchia from the outside and then works with his partner to hit the DDT. Then we get the double beer money suplex. Man, I've missed that move. Nothing got me hyped like that. Rosita's suddenly in the ring, splashing beer over James Storm. He probably liked it. Karen runs to the ring. She's upset about something. As that's going on, Storm gets thrown out of the ring and Rude hits the double R spine buster. More distractions happen and Hernandez nails Rude with the tag title belt. It's over. Anarchia is officially a champion in the TNA record books. And he sucks. Slapnut celebrates with the new champions just to make it even worse. It's a D because they won, but it wasn't exactly good. Match 10, No Surrender 2011, World Tag Title Match. Pope and Devon are the challengers here. They're a team because they both love Devon's kids for some reason. It was a weird storyline and it sucked. The champions are Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita. This group have so much swagger, I'm not going to lie. It's just a shame it's not translating to the ring. The match starts with Devon Dudley knocking down Anarchia, who looks terrified. Pope comes in and boots him in the ribs. He has to tag out because he sucks. Then it all goes botchy, but surprisingly Anarchia is not in the ring to be blamed for this. He does come into the ring now, but he gets double teamed and shoulder blocked into a spine buster. Rosita climbs onto the apron to distract the Pope, who kisses her, and then he dangles her off the apron by her hair, because she's so short. Pope wanted Devon sloppy seconds, it seems. Devon tries to hit the what's up, but there's too many distractions. LAX 2.0 decide to do their leapfrog, which doesn't even look like it would hurt. Next up, Anarchia copies Devon's spinning elbow thing. Everyone wants to copy Devon Dudley in this match. Sarita charges into the ring and she hits poetry in motion on Devon, proving that even the ladies have cooler moves than Anarchia. Pope eventually gets the tag and he hits the inverted atomic drop and a shoulder block. Pope follows it up by going to the top rope with a crossbody. 
We get our second Anarchia move now as Anarchia hits a backdrop suplex and Hernandez hits a splash. They don't make the pin though because they're idiots. Sarita's in the ring again and Rosita hits a dive but Pope catches her and then he spanks her. Pope hits a backstabber to Anarchia which looks pretty nice to be fair. Then there's a suplex attempt but Sarita trips Pope up on the outside and Anarchia lands on top which gets the free as Sarita holds Pope down. I hate this finish and I feel like I've seen it a hundred times in TNA. Shut it's an S, I just don't care for this one. A backdrop suplex doesn't impress me. Match 11, 8 person mixed tag. Mexican America versus Pope, Devon, Tara and Tess Marker. Devon hits Anarchia with the hip toss and brings the Pope in. He hits a couple of atomic drops and a bulldog. The Pope is trying to get back to his old popularity levels at this point and he pimp slaps Anarchia. Mexican America start cheating and Hernandez comes back in. The two Mexicans work together with Hernandez throwing his partner into the Pope and then he hits a bulldog of his own. Busting out new moves every match, look at him go. Devon is in now and he nails him with a clothesline and a net breaker. The ladies try and help their guys again by hitting a double kick to the nutsack but it gets blocked and all the ladies try to get involved now. La Prostitutos are flirting with Devon's stupid kids. They just want to be like their dad Devon, everyone wants to be like Devon. The Mexican American men get clotheslined out of the ring and then Tara and Tess mark a win with a double pin. What is it with tag teams being overshadowed by the ladies that they're with? It's a D, it was an okay match, a bit overbooked. What follows this is a really strange storyline. Anarchia wants to get a tattoo saying nothing's impossible, but he's too scared to do it, despite clearly being covered in tattoos. The men with mohawks break into the parlour and give Anarchia some sort of tattoo, but it's a big mystery of what the tattoo he's given Anarchia says. I don't think this was ever explained. Match 12, Turning Point 2011, World Tag Title Match, 6 person mixed tag. The challengers, the men with mohawks and a lady who doesn't have one versus the champions Anarchia, Hernandez and Sarita with Rosita. Anarchia starts out with longtime rival Jeff Hardy's stoner friend. As usual Shannon gets the better of him with deep arm drags and then he hits a spin kick off the atomic drop. Anarchia hits a knee to the gut of Jesse Neal and runs away. Jesse Neal's mohawk is just incredible, how is it even possible? He looks like a peacock. Anarchia comes back in against Shannon and he hits another arm drag, this time from the ropes. Shannon hits another spin kick and snaps off a hurricanrana for a two count. The Mohawks work together for another two count on Anarchia and he has to tag out again. Hernandez comes in and hits the big shoulder block. The coolest moment of this video happens now as Anarchia hits a drop kick to Jesse as he's hanging off the ring apron. I was scared for his life, I thought he might die. Anarchia also hits a Mohawk takedown and brings his brother in. They try to hit a double splash in the corner on Jesse but he dodges it and it looks like it hurts Anarchia for real. The ladies get in and they instantly put the men to shame with their lucha skills. The men are embarrassed so they force their way back into the match. Jesse is alone in the ring with Anarchia and he gets picked up and dropped on his face. Again, it doesn't look great. Jesse drops Toxin into a leg drop on Anarchia but it's not over. They want to expose Anarchia's ass to the camera to show the tattoo they gave him, I guess. He looks like such a joke. Sarita whacks Toxin with the tag belts and that's the end of this one. Everything Anarchia has been involved with so far looked Shut like it was either dangerous to him or his opponent, so I have to give this one an S. Match 13, World Tag Title Match. The champions Mexican America with Sarita and Rosita versus the challengers Crimson and Matt Boring. Anarchia starts out against the undefeated Crimson and he hits a couple of knockdowns. Then he kicks him in the gut and hits a suplex for a two count. Crimson follows it with knees to the face followed by a net breaker. La Prostitutos get involved so Mexican America can cheat and Hernandez can get into the match. They hit their leapfrog move on Crimson which looks a bit more impactful at this time. Matt Boring eventually comes in and Anarchia doesn't stand a chance. He squashes both the Mexican guys in the corner and then he chokeslams Anarchia. Hernandez makes the save on the pin. Supermex then gets sent out the ring so Anarchia's screwed. Crimson hits the T-bone suplex and Boring follows it with the carbon footprint to end the match. New tag team champions. This is ridiculous, 13 matches in now and he's hit 3 moves, it's an S. Match 14, rematch for the tag titles. The challengers Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita versus the champions Matt Boring and Crimson. They're not hanging around as this one kicks off. Hernandez takes a bad landing to the outside which leaves Anarchia with the two big men. He gets a discus clothesline and it's almost over already. Crimson picks him up and drops him on the turnbuckle and quickly hits a running lariat. Anarchia looks like he's wished he'd stayed at home for this one. Matt Boring's back in now and he gives him a power slam. Boring boots his former partner Hernandez away off the ring apron and then works with Crimson to hit a double shoulder on Anarchia. They follow it with a double choke slam and it's over, and it's also an S. Not sure where Anarchia goes from here because they ain't getting their titles back from these two guys. Match 15, triple threat tag match, the men with mohawks with Toxin versus... Wait a minute, it says Oi on her skirt. 
Oi, oi, oi. So this was a thing in 2011, but I thought that was two different Mohawk men. Molester the Legend or something. I'm confused now. Well, that aside, they take on Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita, and they also take on Devon and the Pope. Anarchia tags in against the Pope and instantly regrets it. He's just useless. Pope gives him a pimp slap. Even though Pope's distracted, he drop toe holds Anarchia on the ropes and crashes down on his back. Anarchia now has a chance to do something because Hernandez takes out the Pope on the outside. So guess what he does? His finisher, the pin. It's not even a two count. Well, next up he hits a scoop slam and an elbow drop. I almost lost my shit. Devon Dudley comes in and he gives Anarchia a flapjack and a shoulder tackle. Devon continues to take out both members of Mexican America on his own. The match eventually ends with Devon hitting a spine buster on Jesse Neal. It's just not good. Not good, that's how you sum up this run. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. That's what I'm writing on this table. It was not good, and it was also an ass. Oh, match 16. Anarchia is forced to team up with his arch nemesis Jeff Hardy's stoner friend, but they're accompanied by La Prostitutos to take on Eric Young and ODB. Anarchia starts out of Eric Young, but it's not exactly a serious matchup. He does a surfboard to Anarchia's back and also gives him a hip toss. He tags out because he sucks. Eric takes his pants off and gives it to the ladies. All these distractions allow Anarchia to hit some stamps and a back elbow. He manages to follow it up with a scoop slam, but Shannon Moore breaks up his momentum and tags himself in. That's really harsh, Shannon. You should know more than anyone how badly Anarchia struggles to hit moves. Eventually, the partners have a shoving match and Eric Young brings in ODB. Anarchia scoop slams ODB and then Shannon has a go at him for slamming a woman. What's he on about? She's in the match. What's he meant to do to her? His only option that doesn't hurt her would be to pin her, but he can't pin her while she's on her feet. Shannon's disgusted and he ditches his partner. ODB slams on Arkea. The ref is distracted by Eric Young's antics, so ODB kicks our guy in the nutsack and pins him for the free. This is the most nailed on entry to the Shove It Zone since Garrett Bishop. After not being on TV for a few months, Mexican America get their car towed. It's some sort of TV crossover and Anarchia has to answer some questions about Mexican culture. He's unable to spell Guadalajara and he's in danger of losing his vile car unless they can win the tag titles tonight. Why would they want that car? Match 17, World Tag Team Title Match, the challengers Mexican America with Rosita and Sarita versus the champions Samoa Joe and Magnus. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Oh my god, a clothesline. Oh wait, he's tagged out, he's gone again. Anarchia then misses a top rope drop kick by a country mile on Joe. The Repo Man comes out and he decides to repossess La Prostitutos. Joe and Magnus win with the flying elbow dropped. It sucked, it's an S. If the lady's gone, you might think it's over now, but it's not. Match 18, Mexican America who actually still have their ladies and they take on the Motor City Machine Guns who are making their long-awaited return after that one-year injury to Chris Saban's knee. Lots of attention on this one as TNA fans really miss the guns. Anarchia starts out shoving Shelly so he gets slapped. Saban gets in and he hits a big axe from the top. Anarchia tags out as usual because he's scared. Hernandez clears the ring on his own and then brings his partner in. He tries to send him into the corner but Shelly dodges his splash. Saban's in again now against Anarchia and he gets put in the tree of woe and drop kicked. Hernandez sneaks into the ring to save his partner but you can only help somebody so much. The guns double kick Anarchia in the corner and they take out Hernandez. The guns hit the skull and crossbones on Anarchia to end the match. It's good to see the guns back but shame it was against these guys. It's, oh, nice. it's now open fight night. Anarchia has a microphone but he's not got anything interesting to say apart from stupid Americanos. He's also saying that he can beat anyone in the whole of TNA. This is answered by... <laughs> oh dear. Match 19, final match. Anarchia versus the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. This might be the standout match of this entire video. This is where we get to see what Anarchia is really made of. Anarchia sends Kurt into the corner and celebrates what he just did. He sends him into the other corner, but Kurt dodges his next attack and then hits a German suplex. Then he quickly follows up with the ankle slam, the ankle lock. Anarchia still can't walk. It went 20 seconds. I can't believe this was allowed to take place for 19 whole matches. It was woeful. One backdrop, two scoop slams, one bulldog and a few pin attempts. So there's only one place he can really go, isn't there? The first member at the Ring of the Hawk Season 2 Shove It Zone is Anarchia. Shove it, Congratulations, man! young man. You take a brick to the head and a punch to the gut. You will be forever remembered in the Shove It Zone. Shove Congratulations it! on the highlight of your wrestling career. Take this with you and shove it. And if you don't agree with that, you're just an idiot. For God's sake, how could you not agree with that final grade? I'll beat you like it's been a whole week since I was last laid.